Okay, today I'm gonna go over the field piece infrared refrigerant leak detector. This is the SRL2. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It takes about 30 seconds for it to warm up and stabilize. So I'm gonna set it aside while it's doing that and show you the accessories. So first it comes in this nice blow molded case. Look inside. We have an extension wand you can add to the tip of the SRL2 just to give you a little bit of extra reach. We also have a needle nose tip that you can add to the uh, tip of the wand just to get into condenser fins or something like tight, you know, tight spots. That sound lets you know that the leak detector is ready and warmed up. But first I'm going to finish showing you the accessories. The SRL2 has a lithium ion battery, so it comes with a car charger as well as a wall charger. Now the life of the battery on the SRL2 is about eight hours, but you can, if you do happen to run the battery dead, you can use it while you're charging it, while you're on the job. It also comes with replacement filters. The filters are in the tip of the SRL2. This is the tip, the replacement needle nose tip, but the same filter goes inside. You can kind of see it right in there, that white filter. Now you just want to replace these when you can see any little bit of dirt, generally about every couple months or so, or when you're using it a lot, maybe every month. And so it comes with 10 replacement filters, and also it comes with a few o spare O-rings. The O-ring is right on this tip right here, so if it dries out, you can replace it with the O-rings that comes with it. And that's the only maintenance you need to do on the SRL2. Uh, on the SRL2, the sensor life is about 10 years, so it's gonna last you a long time as long as you uh, keep it maintained. And um, unlike typical heated diodes where you do have to replace the sensor every year or couple years, depending on the, on the actual leak detector, but this sensor you don't have to replace, and the sensor is built into the middle of the SRL2, so it has a lot of protection um, from getting beat up and stuff. Heated diodes generally either have it right here or have it in the tip, which just leave it more susceptible to getting banged and, and uh, ruined. All right, let's go over the features on the display. So uh, first looking at the LEDs, we first have the what sensitivity level you're on. Now we have high, medium, and low right here. There's also a turbo mode, which I will talk about in just a second. Now the bar graph, this shows you how big of a leak you have, just you know, how you, the, bigger the, the bigger the leak, the higher you'll go on the bar graph. Then we have the peak button. If you press peak, that light will turn on. Now this will hold the highest level that you sense while still being able to sense leaks. So if you got it all the way up, it'll, it'll hold this LED showing you that you got it, then this is the highest level you sensed, and then it'll still allow you to sense leaks while it holds that. And turn that off. Then we have the mute button. You go ahead and mute that for now. And this, the bar graph will still light up so you can see it while it's muted, just if you're in places where you don't want the uh, occupants to be disturbed by the buzzing of the SRL2. And the on off button. All right, that's the display. So what we're gonna do now is actually sense some leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute it. Now the first leak we're gonna sense is our, our big leak. Big leak, because it's only 0.31 ounces per year leak rate, so it's a, still a very smaller refrigerant leaking out of this bottle. And this is one, R134A right now. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. Now the SRL2, what it first stabilizes to is the level of refrigerant inside this room. Uh, or inside the environment that it's in. Now if we were in a contaminated area, it would stabilize to that level of refrigerant. Now because it's always looking for the highest level of refrigerant, you do have to keep it moving when you're sensing leaks. So uh, the leak standard right here that I have, you're gonna see that it has a hole and it's just replicating 8.31 ounces per year outside of that, outside of that hole. And so let's show you how it works in action. So what, it, what you want to do is just slowly move it across the leak and sweep it by. And you'll see that it goes off. Now as it goes off, you want to pass it and keep moving and then sweep back. And it will go off again as you keep on passing the leak. And so this is what we call the sweeping method. And you just want to dial it, dial it in until that buzzer you know, stops going off. Now this is a pretty big leak for high sensitivity. 
However, if I hover over it, which this is a common mistake that people use with infrared leak detectors, if I hover over it, it will stabilize to that level. You can see that it's not going off and I'm right over that leak. Well, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to stabilize to the level of refrigerant that it's in. And that's why you have to keep it moving. So if I just move it away for a couple seconds and move it back, I'm gonna still sense that leak. So just always keep the wand moving slow and you will find leaks just fine. All right, now what we're gonna do is show you our super tiny leak. Remember this one was the 0.31 ounces per year leak. We have this other fancy contraption right here. And this uh, is gonna replicate a 0.5 ounces, um, 0.05 ounces per year leak rate. So I'm just gonna take off this cap and get it ready to go. So you can see this is a fancy, fancy setup we got here. All right. All right, let's just sweep over this. Now see, even at 0.05, the high sensitivity is still gonna sense it, but you can see that it doesn't go all the way up on the bar graph. I think I just made it out, just got out of the yellow on the bar graph, so it went up about five or six spaces. So it's not as big as the leak that we were sensing before. Now just to show you how turbo mode works on really tiny leaks, the sound's a little bit different, so I'm gonna put it in turbo mode. I'm just gonna press it four times. One, two, three, four. Oops, gotta press it kind of fast, so one, two, three, four. And you'll see that the flutter, that the first LED will start fluttering when it's in turbo mode. Now the sound's also gonna be a little bit different, so let's go ahead and test this leak again. You can see that it's a, a solid, a solid tone rather than like a more fluttery tone. And this will also still stabilize to that level of refrigerant. You can see that this leak stabilizes a lot faster than the 0.3 uh, one ounces per year leak just because it's this is a much smaller leak. But it's still only a few seconds and I can go right back. All right, those are the two leak standards that we have, the 0.05 ounces per year leak rate and the 0.31 ounces per year leak rate. Now I'm gonna turn it off to remote. Now also what's nice about the infrared leak detectors is they don't go off on oil or moisture. So I have a little bit of oil, refrigerant oil right here. I'm just gonna refresh it with, uh, with this bottle of oil. Just so we have, make sure that we have brand new fumes to try to detect. Now a lot of heated diodes will go off on refrigerant oil. And first I'm gonna put it in the high sensitivity just to give it, it the worst case scenario. Or, and put it right down at that level. Now obviously I'm not gonna stick it in, but it's not going off on any of those fumes. I can actually smell them. Now let's put it into turbo mode. Oh, didn't get there. Oh, it got there, okay. Put it into turbo mode. You can see that the uh, light is fluttering. And it's still not gonna go off on that refrigerant oil. It will go off on refrigerant, it's not refrigerant oil. So there is the SRL 2.